Boat TV, Buck superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo had some interesting comments about superstars coming to Milwaukee. Now, this is a translation of the comment made by Giannis, who is speaking his native language, which, of course, is Greek. Uh, this is a statement that I've never made before. If LeBron and Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis came to Milwaukee, I would have been good with that. I'm not interested if I'm at the top, second, or third name, okay? I'm 25. I want to win because when I retire, that's what people will remember. And if I got LeBron, KD, Davis, if all those come, I wouldn't mind at all. I don't care if I'm the top player on the team. Giannis can become an unrestricted free agent after this season. Stephen A., can you see Giannis staying with the Bucks? Because that quote makes it seem like that's what he intends on doing. Uh, I can see him staying with the Bucks if indeed they would have ended. They would ended up in the They would have ended up in the finals uh, because I think that he'd realize that he's got a legitimate shot to win it all, and I think that's how he views it. Getting to the conference finals might be an accomplishment, uh, but in the same breath, when you consider the questions that we've had about the Eastern Conference historically, it was a foregone conclusion that whoever came out of the East was going to lose to the powers in the West, whoever that team may be, whether it be Golden State or in last year's case, the Los Angeles Lakers. That's just how you view it. Toronto was an aberration because KD obviously got hurt and Klay Thompson went down in game six despite having 30 in the third quarter. Order. But when you look at the Milwaukee Bucks right now, if you're Giannis, if Middleton shows up and be that 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 bona fide number two or number three now that Drew Holiday is there, a career 45 percent shooter from the uh, from the field, the 35 plus percent shooter from three point range, and considered one of the best two way players and one of the elite defenders uh, this game that exists in this game today. When you look at it from that perspective, there's really not much of an excuse for Milwaukee not to come out of the East, especially if James Harden doesn't end up in Brooklyn and join Kyrie and KD. So again, if they got to the finals, um, then I think I think Giannis ends up staying in Milwaukee because when you come from Greece and when you know his background and you consider the profile max that has been done on him and how poor um, his family was and some of the trials and tribulations that they endured, he's overcome an awful lot. And... You know, when you come from a different nation and you come to this country, we might sit here and look at La La, meaning Los Angeles, being significantly different than Milwaukee, et cetera, et cetera. But when you come from where he comes from, Milwaukee's damn near Southern California. So you know what? You don't particularly mind. Yeah. And as a result of that, I think that way, the way they've treated him, the way they've embraced him, the way he has performed for them, I think under ideal circumstances, he'd love to stay in Milwaukee. But they've got to win, and I think they've yeah. got to come out of the East in order to keep him in Milwaukee long term. First of all, Giannis' statement, Giannis is that dude. A back-to-back -back MVP talking about, I could be the fourth best player on the team. I'm trying to win championships. That's what people remember. He's absolutely right. He wants it to be in Milwaukee. I'm going to address what you just said. He's sure. not going to stay in Milwaukee. And the reason he's not going to stay in Milwaukee was because there's a tide in the affairs of men, Stephen A., which, taken at the flood, lead on to great fortune, right? The Milwaukee Bucks ownership, those three uh, investor guys who own the Milwaukee Bucks, mm -hmm. decided, they decided to let Malcolm Brogdon walk out the door instead of paying, like, an enormous luxury tax bill by giving him a contract maybe he didn't deserve. The problem is this. What you said, let's take what you said about Giannis in Milwaukee and how he's from very desperate circumstances. Milwaukee looks really good to him. He doesn't care about, oh, it's sunny or in L.A. or something. But the rest of the league does. Other players do. And that's why in the history of time, Milwaukee has never signed a, a, giant, a great free agent. I'm trying to remember who it was. I keep forgetting it was a forward about six or seven years ago. They signed to a $15 million a year contract. He was okay. He wasn't a giant star. Big stars don't sign in Milwaukee. So what does that mean? If Giannis' is number one thing is I'm trying to win a championship or championships, and his number two thing is I want to do it in Milwaukee, but the priority is championships. Once you don't sign Brogdon, you have fewer things to trade to bring in great players. So, for example, they pulled off the trade for Drew Holiday. It's a great addition. Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Giannis. Is that enough to get to the finals? Maybe. Is it enough to win a championship? Probably not. What if they had Chris Paul on that team as well? Would that be enough? Mm. Now you say, yep, I think that team probably wins the championship. Chris Paul moved teams. He switched teams. Phoenix got him for Kelly Oubre and a couple of guys and a, and a first round pick. You mean to tell me if you had Brogdon on the team, you couldn't move him in a package for Chris Paul? Probably a better package. 
I mean, the point is, because you can match up salaries, you have a valuable player. The point is, the Bucks played the town cheap when they had the chance. Now they didn't have enough to put an actual championship roster together. Giannis is going to recognize that. They couldn't even complete the trade for, for uh, Bogdanovich, which would have helped and probably still wouldn't have been enough, right? They need another star player in order to get over the Lakers, in order to get even over a healthy Nets team. They didn't do it. They won't win the championship this year, and Giannis will sign away somewhere else. It's not because he doesn't want to be in Milwaukee. It's because he values championships more. And as uh, Robert De Niro told Sylvester Stallone in Copland, Stephen A., when Stallone decided to do, to, to, to do what Robert De Niro wanted him to do but too late, you blew it! You blew it, Milwaukee Bucks! You blew it! Well, I think, that, I think the jury's still out on that. I mean, to have a guy like Drew Holiday, to have a guy like Drew Holiday, that's nothing to sneeze at. I love Malcolm Brogdon, and he's got an incredible upside. He's not Drew Holiday, not yet. When you consider what Drew brings to the table on the defensive side of the floor and offensively, he's no worse than Malcolm Brogdon. You got to take that into consideration and consider it an upgrade. Secondly, and more importantly, here's the deal. If you were to get to the finals, and let's say you gave the Lakers a run for their money, then you're not putting it on the organization. You're looking at what you have in place, and you're saying, we have enough. Now, if you go if you go to the, to the finals and you're Miami against the Lakers, who were clearly overmatched, um, then that's a different ball game. But if you go to the finals and you have a dogfight, then that's not on management. That's you looking at yourselves and saying, if we had done this, if we had done that, we could win, we could win it all. You got to look at Budenholzer, who I think is an exceptional coach. But the bottom line is they came up short last season. There's no way around it. And one could argue the season before that because you lost four straight. Yes, it was to Kawhi Leonard in Toronto in Toronto. But if you were good enough to be up 2-0, you should be good enough to avoid four straight losses, okay? At least force a game seven for uh, crying but, out loud. So those things are on Budenholzer's resume as well. So we got to take into consideration everything that's going on with them. And again, that's why I think it comes down to a berth in the finals because when you look at them, they may feel they have enough. We'll find out. Budenholzer is a legitimate criticism because with the Hawks, 60 wins, and then they fall in the playoffs. And now with Milwaukee, at, at a bunch of wins and a superstar, they fall in the playoffs. But Stephen A., when there's a team like the Lakers out there with two MVP players and you got one, one or two other All-Stars isn't enough. You better load up. They di I'm not saying Brogdon or uh, uh, Drew Holiday. I'm saying Brogdon and Drew Holiday. And now you can flip Brogdon maybe in a deal for CP3. And then you have Middleton and CP3. And Drew Holiday and Giannis. Now you win a championship. Just the it boards. Is gangster out there. Like it is hard to win a championship. And if Milwaukee wants to keep their guy who puts championships above all things, they had to put the team around him. They put a competitive team around him, not a championship team. Well, if he were in Miami, you got the Greek freak with Bam out of bio and 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 obviously Jimmy Butler. Uh Mm -hmm. The Greek freak with Jimmy, mm -hmm. with uh, Drew Holiday and Middleton, mm -hmm. with Middleton averaging 20 a game and doing what he's supposed to do, is nothing to sneeze at either. It's about really about Middleton. What's he I'm going to do? We're about to find out. I'm not sneezing, mm -hmm. but we ain't throwing any parades either. Let's be honest. Unfortunately, we got to run, fellas, because I got a lot of other stuff to discuss with you, like the NFL. When we come back here on First Take, Mike Tomlin calls the Steelers a junior varsity squad after their win against Baltimore, but find out why you should be more confident about that.